Let's talk about the Trudon 2.0. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Taylor and I run a company called YGK 3D. I 3D print for a living, so my printers are very important to me. As you can see, I have quite a few of them behind me and I have a new addition to my family. It is the Trudon 2.0. So in the first two videos in the series, I talked about what's inside the box for the Trudon. I talked about the process for assembling the printer in the second video. And if you've not seen either of those videos yet, I do encourage you to go back and watch them. That will give you some precursor knowledge into what this printer is all about. In this video, I'm going to be giving a preliminary review, some first impressions of this printer. It is not going to be comprehensive by any means. It's just going to give you some insights into what I've experienced owning this printer for a little under a month now, having built it and having gotten the first few prints off of it. So in this video, we are going to be covering the build process. We're gonna discuss the build quality. We're gonna discuss the software. We're gonna discuss some value added features that this printer has. We're gonna discuss the upgradability of this printer. And we're gonna discuss the print quality. And finally, we are going to discuss the value for money, whether I think this is a good buy. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's talk about the Trudon 2.0. So the Trudon 2.0 is a derivative of the Voron 2.4 design. It is not technically a clone because supposedly you cannot actually clone an open source design, um, but the Voron 2.4 design is open source. This is a derivative of that design. So they've taken what Voron has produced and Vividino as a company has iterated on that and improved on it in some ways. And in other ways, they've just taken verbatim what the Voron 2.4 design is, and they packaged that up into a consumer product that is almost turnkey. It is a partially pre-assembled printer. You get this out of the box, you spend a little bit of time assembling it, and that was the topic of the second video, was how long would this printer actually take to assemble? Vividino quotes 15 to 30 minutes, which I think we all realized was kind of unrealistic as soon as we saw that there were belts and pulleys that needed to be assembled. So in the second video in my series, I showed how long it really took to assemble. And the answer to that is three hours. So not 30 minutes, but three hours. So considerably longer than quoted on the manufacturer's website, but it is still a far cry from the days that it takes to build a Voron 2.4. So there's certainly a value proposition here, whether you've had experience with Voron before or whether you just want a really fast 3D printer that prints with high quality. There's a tremendous amount of potential here. And the question is, does it hold up? Is it in fact a good printer? So that is what I'm going to be answering in this video. So stay tuned to the end when I show you a comparison of a Benchy printed on the Trudon 2.0 and the exact same Benchy printed on the Voron 2.4. So overall, the build process for this printer was fairly straightforward. It did take longer than quoted, but it was by no means difficult. There were a few steps that might trip up the newcomer to the hobby, but in general, it was quite straightforward and there should be nothing that you would deem particularly difficult in this build process. Overall, I was very pleased with the quality of the printer, all of the packaging and the parts that were supplied with it. There was tools for just about every step of the process and the quality of the parts is really good. And it is in fact superior to a traditional Voron printer because in that scenario, you would typically be printing all of your parts. Here, every single part in this printer is either injection molded plastic or some sort of metal. The overall frame of the printer is very rigid. All in all, it really, is just a high quality machine. A few things that I think are value added features on this machine are the addition of a nozzle wiping brush, the addition of an LED light bar, and the integrated Wi-Fi on this Big Tree Tech motherboard. Unlike a Voron 2.4 where you might use an octopus as your control board and then you would still need a Raspberry Pi for networking. So mechanically, this is a very sound printer. It is well built with good parts. The software it's supplied with, Duet Web Control is very capable and it is convenient right out of the box. 
Now the other aspect of software that we need to consider is slicing software. So this printer is supplied with one machine settings profile for Cura, as well as one print settings profile. The print settings profile is unfortunately very underwhelming. It has some settings that seem to be geared towards ABS, but it is not specifically indicated as an ABS profile. The retraction length is severely too large and the speeds that are set in the profile are very, very high, which should be a good thing. We buy a Core XY printer like this with the intention of printing fast. However, out of the box, this machine is really not equipped to print as fast as this profile is set up for. A big reason for that are the mechanical resonances of this machine that manifest at high print speeds. So we start to see ringing artifacts in our prints and the speeds of this Vividino supplied profile really amplify those resonances and create a tremendous amount of ringing in the prints. And the quality is just really poor overall. So out of the box, the machine as it stands is not equipped to print that quick. A lot of the reason people want to use Clipper firmware is because it has native support for accelerometers. And therefore we can put an accelerometer on the print head, characterize the resonances and then compensate for them. Here we're running RepRap, so we don't have native support for the same type of accelerometer, but RepRap firmware does have its equivalent of input shaping. However, we do need to use a different accelerometer. So this is the LIS-3DH accelerometer that is required for this machine, whereas you may be used to using the ADXL-345 accelerometer in Clipper firmware. So yes, you can do input shaping on this machine, and yes, it is required if you do want to print at those high print speeds. So I have gotten some good print quality results off this machine at slower speeds. And in fact, these are the types of speeds that are pre-configured in the Prusa Slicer profile for the Voron 2.4. And these are still faster than your average bed slinger printer like the Prusa Mark 3S. So if you're content with not pushing this machine to its limits and printing at more conservative speeds, you can get good print quality with this Trudon 2.0 out of the box. However, if you want to push it to its limits and print fast, which is kind of what these types of machines are intended for, it is in my mind an absolute necessity to conduct input shaping on this machine. On the bright side, there is some documentation supplied by Team Gloomy on how to conduct input shaping on this Octopus X7 board that the Trudon 2.0 is supplied with. And it is in fact not that difficult. I haven't done the process myself, but I've read through the documentation and I have a rough idea of what is required. All we need to do is remove the LCD and then we can use the LCD ribbon cables as kind of a gateway to the motherboard without needing to go inside the printer. For this process, we will need to know which pins on that LCD ribbon cable correspond to which pins on the motherboard. And we need to map those to the pins on the accelerometer and then temporarily change some of our firmware configuration in order to conduct the input shaping. Fortunately, all of this is explained in detail on Team Gloomy's wiki page, and we can use that to inform our process of input shaping. So if you made it this far, I'm going to show you a side-by-side -side now of a print from the Voron 2.4 and a print from the Trudon 2.0 printed at the stock 0.15 millimeter profile provided with Prusa Slicer. And this is a profile that is set up specifically for the Voron 2.4. It is quite conservative. It is not a particularly fast profile, but the quality of the print is good. And I'm happy with it on my Voron 2.4. And in fact, the Trudon 2.0 in many ways outperformed my Voron 2.4. Now keep in mind, my Voron is not necessarily tuned as well as some Vorons out there, and there could be improvements made to make these more comparable. But considering that the Trudon 2.0 out of the box is very comparable in print quality to the Voron 2.4, is a very positive outcome. And I'm very pleased with the quality of the prints at this speed. I would like to see better print quality at higher speeds, but again, all that's going to take is that input shaping process compensating for those resonances, and then we should get 
equally high quality prints at high speeds. So let's talk about the ease of upgrading this machine. So many of you will want to upgrade this machine with some of the standard upgrades that you might see on a Voron printer. This machine comes stock with the afterburner tool head. Some of you might wish to upgrade to the stealth burner tool head. Given that all of the geometry and the hardware on the XY gantry is pretty much equivalent to the stock Voron 2.4, I don't see any reason why you couldn't make that change if you wanted to. If you wanted to go from an inductive probe to the clicky probe, you could simply unplug the inductive probe, plug in the clicky probe, maybe change a few lines in your firmware and you should be good to go. However, some other upgrades might be a little bit more difficult because you do not have a whole lot of excess ports on the board which you can access. Almost all of the electronics are rooted through a single bus cable which goes to a breakout board on the base of the printer. And all of the inputs on that breakout board are already occupied by the peripherals that you see installed here. So you could in theory remove things like the light bar or the filament runout sensor if you didn't need them and you could remap those inputs to other things. So let's talk about value for money. Is this printer a good buy? This is currently on pre-sale for 899 US dollars. In my first video, I compared that to the cost of a Voron kit, also from Vividino, and I said that it was 719 US dollars. But in fact, that is the cost for the 250 millimeter variant of that kit. This printer is 350 millimeters. So a more fair comparison would be to compare this to the 350 millimeter Voron 2.4 kit. And that sells for 839. So 839 versus 899. That's a $60 difference to save days of your time. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please do let me know down in the comments what you think of this printer. Are you thinking of picking one up? Is there anything holding you back? Do you have any questions, anything that I haven't answered in this video or either of the other two videos? And also, would you like to see a fourth video in this series? Would you like to see a comprehensive review of this printer? Would you like to see the process of input shaping and how the print quality improves after that process is complete? There's certainly a lot to digest here and a lot to unpack. I thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my channel. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so down below. I 3D print for a living, I'm passionate about it, and I'm looking forward to growing this channel with you and sharing my knowledge and passion for 3D printing. So until next time, I'm Taylor, this is YGK3D, happy printing.